giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. Justin's going to tell us about Team 973. From Atescadero, California, Atescadero High School, it's the Graybots. 26, 5 and 1 overall, and we're the winners of the Orange County Regional. At the Orange County Regional, 973 was able to team up with retiring 330 and get the regional win. Their next event, they also played phenomenally well and though could not take down the 1678-1323 alliance. If you haven't seen them play uh, yet, you'll see that the robot uses the limelight to great effect and can score easily with hatches or cargo. They have a great climb and will certainly have a say with how the new division plays out in Houston. So good luck to Team 973, the Gray Bots. So yeah, new division looks um, interesting. Uh, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be a good battle to watch um, for sure, and you guys will be able to watch it live, which is nice. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> watch who the uh, who, who can make the affection of uh, Mad Town. Exactly. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> that will be very interesting. Uh, uh, we were in a split decision on the previous show. Uh, Lino and myself thought that they that Mad Town would fit better with twenty nine ten, uh, and then uh, Nick and Ben thought that Mad Town would fit better with nine seventy three. So. <laughs> But the best thing would be is if uh, none of those teams seed in the top and there's like a scorched earth. That's what I'm hoping yeah. for, right? That would be You're, amazing. I did hear that. You did mention I'm that. an evil person. So. I say, Tower's a big scorched earth fan. I am not. <laughs> well, okay, I'm not overall, but it does add to the drama a lot. It for certainly like does. Yeah. I agree that the best robot should seed top, and, and yeah. you know, but it doesn't always happen, so it's always interesting when uh, the see how strategies change based on scorched earth. To me, like, if you come out of a scorched earth and you win – to me, that shows that just how much you've been able to adapt your strategy, and I think mm -hmm. it really speaks a lot. Agreed. I do think this game overall, though, is pretty good. At, um, I think the top teams are, are have been pretty consistently seeding um, seeding high. So some years it's not as and it, getting carried is a little bit easier, but this game I don't think is is quite that bad. But it's new one is going to be a battle. It's easier to get at least three RPs every match this year, yep. I think, versus other years. Uh, so you know the top tier teams are going to get the four, or in this case, like two, the two extra RPs. So pretty much, if you're a top tier team, I would think you're you are always getting one, and probably over fifty percent of the time getting two extra RPs each mm -hmm. match, right? So that uh, you know, versus other years where you know 2017, how many teams were really getting the KPA bonus, and that you know a very small percentage KPA of teams. KPA bonus, I haven't heard that. Yeah, right. So I didn't, I didn't remember that. It just kind of rolled off the tongue and <laughs> said it right. So, yeah, I think like uh, 2056, I think had like eight other 11, I think had four ranking point matches, I think, um, at the Ontario District Championship, something like that. So, yeah, definitely over like 50%, I think. Just real quick explanation uh, uh, on what Scorch Earth is, because uh, Scott, my lawn was asking. So, Scorch Earth is when you have a typically a team that is not deserving to be seeded in the number one seed, but let's just say any team, the number one seed, and they just literally just start going down a list, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and they all decline them. Um, and that's what we call a score shirt because then nobody can have in picking uh, between the alliances. Uh, so it does happen. Uh, I agree with you, Mike. I don't think it's happened as much this year as uh, we've seen other years, uh, but it could happen. Who knows? Well, and they're scorched earth by, sometimes they're scorched earth by um, choice or like deliberate scorched earth where, mm. um, Teams like know they're doing it, but then you also have the teams that don't know they're doing it, you know, and are just, yeah. just suck. <laughs> <laughs> kind of going down the list, yeah. you know, and, and doing it. But sometimes, like, some, sometimes there is a strategy, you know, two teams really, really want to play together, mm -hmm. um, you know, and you pick somebody so they can't be picked, you know, by the next team or something. So, um, sometimes yeah, there is some strategy to it. But if you ever want a strategy secret, if you find yourself in that position, that team comes up and says, Hey, don't pick us because we don't think we're going to be a good fit. And they're like four seeds down. Just pick them so they can't be picked by the other lines because yeah. they're only saying that to you so they can get picked up by the other lines. Don't anybody fool you on something yeah, like that. And I'm not on a team anymore, so I don't mind, well, I don't mind who, saying that out loud. Who would ever do that to a team? We would never. We no. typically use the line, don't pick us. We're going to decline. We don't want to have to decline you, so just don't pick us. So. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. But, but you're saying that, be, I mean, it, it's true that you, you're just like, please don't pick us, please don't pick us because you want to exactly. get – yeah, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. So, so you know, it sometimes can be a good strategy. Yeah. Cool. All right. So back to it. Back to it. In the ninth spot, Mike's going to talk about Team 1619. From Longmont, Colorado, it's Upper Creek Robotics. An overall record of 31 wins, three losses. They were the winners of the Oklahoma and the Colorado Regionals. So no stranger to the top 25, 1619. Uh, we'll finish here um, at ninth overall, heading into Houston. They're bringing in, and with them an impressive season, only three losses on the year um, through two events. Um, so two number one seeds and two regional wins. Upper Creek um, is a consistent team 
Um, Adler is obviously playing this game very well. They made it to Einstein in the round robin last year from Newton. Uh, they look back to get there this year um, as they'll be in the Turing division um, in Houston. Um, so good luck and uh, to this great team from the, mid the Midwest, um, settling here at number nine. And uh, congratulations to them. You know, I had them a couple of spots higher uh, in mine. I think 16-19 is, uh, you know, it, when, you, when you look at who the, the, the following teams are, it is hard to contest. I think any of these teams could really slot, with the exception of one or two, which I think should be a few slots lower. I, I had at 16-19, I think, in my number six spot. 16-19 uh, to me has just been very, very consistent. That climb has been awesome to see and, and the habit working. Uh, big shout out to, uh, you know, our region recap West host, Clint Ott, uh, for just having a phenomenal season uh, with them so far. I'm loving this video too. This is really great. The uh, I uh, producer Nick can chime my ear. Who makes these videos? Uh, Jeremy, uh, who makes these uh, incredible videos every single year. Uh, these are cinematic masterpieces. Honestly, yeah, are. these are some of the best videos I've ever seen. And apparently, he's a senior as well too. So oh, he's in high school. This is a high schooler. Man, yeah. I, man, I hope you're going to this a professional career. Holy crap, man. Or if you uh, better pitch, why could become professional? Well, you can just volunteer your time on fun. And we'd, uh, love yeah. to have you on. <laughs> we'd love to have you on and make some of these videos. Why well, get paid yeah. really well? Yeah, really yeah. yeah. <laughs> why get paid when you can volunteer? So. That's right. <laughs> Story of my life until about three years ago. <laughs> yeah. I'm like mesmerized by this video. It's incredible. I know, right? so Isn't it awesome? It's really cool. Well done, Jeremy. We'll see him this weekend. Definitely have to say hi to Jeremy. I'd love to see what he does. Sure. Cool. All right. So our uh, eighth ranked team is going to be team 3310. From Heath, Texas, Rockwell Heath High School with Blackhawk Robotics, 46, 7 and 1 overall. And with the winners, the Amarillo and Greenville District events, as well as the inaugural FIT District Championship. It's safe to say their quarterfinal exit way back in the 2016 Curie Division. Uh, since then, 3310 has absolutely been on fire. They have won every district or regional event they have attended since then, as well as a trip to Einstein in 2017, and were new and finalists last year. The scary thing about that is this might be their best robot yet here in 2019. Mm -hmm. After a dominating season, you know they just can't wait to hit the field in the Turing division this week and return to Einstein is certainly realistic, if not expected. So good luck to Team 3310 Blackhawk Robotics. I kind of agree with what uh, Dirt Biker said in the chat. I could see 3310 being in the, the top two um, on this list. They are incredible. They've been great, like I said, for, for years and, and this year um, even more so. I have them at five on my list. So I don't I don't think they're the second best. I, I could see the argument for it. A uh, couple other teams, to me, rise a little bit above, but definitely a phenomenal team. 3310 is eight, by the way. Yeah. That's what we just typed in chat. They're eight. eight. And that's what you said, Justin, kind of like this is they've had this so much success in years past. But then, you know, we're all agreeing here that this is like their best of the last, yeah. you know, through all of that. So very cool. For sure. And scary. For, scary for everyone else. <laughs> that's awesome. Right. awesome for them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So we're going to move on. Move on here. Mike's going to talk about in the seventh spot, Team 971. For Mountain View, California, and Mountain View High School, it's Spartan Robotics. They have an overall record of 30 and 5. They were the two time regional winners this year, the San Francisco and in Utah. So, always turning heads with their unique designs this year is really no different, um, as they have that mechanism for hatches and cargo that is just so unique to this year's game. Um, can get a little wonky, I think, a little during defense just because of the way they, they hold it, but. Um, but also because of their their mechanism, they can really just <laughs> literally place like keep a hold on the ball until it is in you know in the scoring into the hole on the, on the ship, and it's just I love it. Um, so they'll be in Galileo on the division this year, and they've not been to Einstein since 2009. Um, wow, which I found also kind of surprising. Um, where they they um, took the championship win there as well, so. Uh, good luck to 971 this weekend. Uh, I love their robot. I love just how it how it looks, how it plays, and um, they'll be again. They'll be on uh, Galileo because <laughs> that's where everybody is. <laughs> Something I want to point out real quick is uh, Nick is showing this clip from the Utah uh, Regional Final Three. Uh, you know they can be defended against, and you see in here that they haven't scored a game piece in about uh, 40 seconds or so. Yeah. Um, so it'll be interesting to see you know how their how the strategy change. Uh, I mean it is the finals. Expect tough defense on something like that, right? Uh, but with that said, I would also expect uh, tough defense played against them in every single match uh, because they are so good. 
Um, and, you know, you can see in that score right there that they are able to get around a little bit, but they had a lot of trouble scoring uh, hatches uh, with yeah. that tough defense that was played against them. So it'll be uh, interesting to see. Uh, I'm with you, Mike. I love their robot. I love the small profile and small frame that they have. And uh, I'm hoping they can utilize that to their advantage more uh, with a bit more uh, perhaps practice against tough defense. Yeah, it's just, I mean, it, it's just tough because they have such little contact um, on the ball or on the hatch that, you know, it's it's just, it gets a little wonky. So, mm -hmm. um, but... That being said, they, you know, once they're in position, um, you know, they do, they do well and we'll just have to see who they end up with, you know, cause if, if their partner draws more attention, then, um, you know, they're, they're completing the rocket by themselves with plenty of time to spare. So, um, it's going to be interesting to see, and it's just on a side note, how this kind of all shakes out with it's so many high level teams going to be, you know, in one area at the same time. Yeah, no doubt. Okay. Moving on to our sixth ranked team. Um, it's going to be team 2910. From Mill Creek, Washington, Henry M. Jackson High School, it's Jack and the Bot. 67 wins, only six losses overall. And with the winners, the Mount Vernon, Sundome, and Glacier Peak District events, as well as the Pacific Northwest District Championship. Mm -hmm. Four event wins for this incredible machine, and it's been great to watch the conversation. Can this Lobot, who just dominated, who have just dominated all season long, compete at the championship? My opinion, they will be the top pick team, likely by 13-23. You just can't ignore 2910's scoring ability, and mm -hmm. especially in the face of defense. And if you do underestimate them, you'll get beat by them. It's that simple. Uh, a week from now, we'll be call we might be calling this low bot from Mill Creek 2019 Champions of the World. It's going to be a blast to watch either way. They are in the Newton division and begin their trek to Einstein on Thursday. Good luck to 2910, Jack and the Bot. And I think really the only thing Jack and Bob has going against them is that um, in, is their qual right in quals uh, they're not going to be they're not going to be a top team. It's just there's there's virtually no way it's going to happen uh, with as they are relying on alliance partners to get that fourth RP and that's that hopefully won't be their Achilles heel uh, against them because if they're not selected you know if 1323 does rank number one which is an assumption still but I think a pretty darn good assumption that if they're not selected by them are they going to be able to have enough with their other whoever you know, is the luck of the draw number two alliance? Uh, is that team going to be good enough with them to potentially beat uh, something like a 1323-973 alliance? And I think that's the big risk factor. If you're jacking the bot, you're literally rolling the dice on if you're mm -hmm. going to get picked up or not, or when yeah. I should say. Mm. Yeah, that's the that's the alliance selections I'm most looking forward to seeing and how uh, how Newton plays out in that way because it's going to be you know 1323. I think they obviously they have a, the best chance of seeding one, and the decision they make is going to really um, dictate how the rest of Houston mm -hmm. really plays out. So mm -hmm. it'll be exciting to watch. It's so fluid around the field. I love watching them play. Yeah, I mean they're they're no doubt amazing. Um, they were my number four ranked team, um, and I think they're. Absolutely just phenomenal. And I mean, look, you look at the strategy at, at PW championships, nobody even, they don't even play defense against them because they're so quick that they know it's better off playing defense against 2046 in this situation, which I totally Absolutely. agree with. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. But it's, I mean, that, that just shows that like, I mean, you got to a point where they're so good. You can't even play defense against them. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. If awesome. you look at a match against, you know, 13, if you're trying to stretch his against a 13, 23, 29, 10 alliance, I don't know who you play defense on because it's just, you yeah. know, I think it's a, it's a fool's errand problem. I think you literally just run your robot back and forth along yeah. the uh, width of the field, hoping that you bump into one of them at some point. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. Yeah. That's my guess. <laughs> Good luck. It'd be cool to watch either way. Oh, yeah. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.